Jump Force. Announced at 2019's E3, I was super excited for this game, but not in a traditional sense. I never really imagined it was going to be some five star fighting game, but I did have hopes of it being a solid, fun final product, and it halfway delivered on that, kinda. But it was recently announced that Bandai was going to be delisting the game from all online marketplaces and stores and stripping the game of all its online components outside of unranked player matches, which is a problem in itself, but we'll get there. So with all this happening, I think it's pretty safe to say Jump Force wasn't exactly the commercial success it was meant to be, but we of course need to find out why, and that's why we're going to do a nice video on what went wrong with Jump Force. So a lot of people rag on Jump Force and talk about how trash it is, but by reading a lot of these hate-filled comments online, it really gives me the impression that most of these people either A, never played Jump Force and just talk about how bad it is from the sidelines, and or B, didn't play enough of Jump Force to get a real understanding for what was wrong with it, or C, they just see so many problems and issues, it's just way easier to give a sweeping decree that it's bad instead of going into each individual details like I'm about to waste my time doing. Now, all three of these reasons are fine, I guess. I'll admit, it's a little corny to bash something you never personally gave a chance, but where there's smoke, there's fire, I guess. But playing something and seeing you don't like it, regardless of the reason, is fair game in my eyes. Even if the public opinion of Jump Force was that it's a good game, you'd still be entitled to not like it. Also, something to point out is I'm not too sure of the crossover between people who play Jump Force for a good amount of time and people who play more traditional fighting games. And that's important because a lot of the reasons Jump Force fails is because it is a fighting game, but just gets wrong so many of the things you need to get right to have a good fighting game. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I wasn't looking for Jump Force to be some super hyper competitive game. It's a 3D anime arena brawler, and I know there are people out there who seem to think you can make a super competitive one of these because of the Storm games. And don't get me wrong, those can certainly be competitive, but they'll never be played at like the highest level. You're never going to catch a Storm tournament at EVO, and some people convince themselves because the game isn't that popular that's the reason but no that's not the case these games just <laughs> at a fundamental level have a ceiling when it comes to how competitive and how much strategy you can really get out of them luckily though for this video i am one of those people who has a deep love for more traditional fighting games they're literally my favorite genre of games and have a good amount of dealings with jump force i have well over 100 hours in the game now there have been people who've pointed out some of the flaws instantly the moment it came out. Uh, Globeku comes to mind, Papa Berto also comes to mind as decent sized content creators who made valid criticisms on Jump Force. But Globeku's critiques were within the first month or so of the game being out and I think he slowly realized more and more that problems existed with Jump Force and abandoned ship because Spike Chunsoft, the dev team for Jump Force, made it very clear that they had no intentions of really trying to make this a competitive fighting game. And Pablo Berto, who's probably the biggest and most consistent content creator when it comes to making Jump Force content, probably just doesn't feel the need to constantly point out the broken things over and over and over again. I can only imagine that would suck some of the fun out of making content on the game if you're constantly having to point out the flaws. It just doesn't really make too much sense to continue doing that. And over a time period, I'm sure his fan base would say, hey, just don't play the game. So with this video, I'm hoping to really compile everything that's went wrong with this game, as the title implies. The big issues that existed within Jump Force on a gameplay level are the guard break exploit, unfair frames, escape spam, and an unbalanced combo to damage output. First we gotta cover the probably most popular problem with Jump Force and that's the guard break exploit. So everyone knows how important defending yourself in a fight is. 
the same thing applies to fighting in games. You want to limit the amount of damage you take while doing as much damage to your opponent as possible. But fighting games typically include mechanics to get around guards because nobody wants a boring gameplay loop of players just turtling behind block. The most common mechanics that exist within fighting games to get around guards are guard breaks and grabs. Now, the grabs and jump force certainly are no walk in the park and we'll be touching those when we talk about unfair frames. But for the most part, the guard break mechanic in Jump Force was and kind of still is so easily exploited that anything above a beginner level is completely flawed and not even worth dealing with unless you're going to have a nice gentleman's agreement that you won't use this exploit, which the chances of you having a gentleman's agreement with one random person online who cares nothing more than about winning is very, very low. The way this exploit works is pretty much like this. You throw out an attack and then you rush your opponent and then you execute some type of attack to get around their guard. Now, the reason this is broken is because this puts the person in a position where they either have to A, eat the first attack that you threw out and potentially any follow up attack after that, or B, let you break their guard because they don't want to be hit by the original attack that you dealt out. Now. As I said, Jump Force is not the first or only game to have a guard break mechanic. It's existed for a really, really long time, meaning plenty of dev teams have seen situations where there's a person or a character on a roster who can simultaneously throw out an attack while also rushing someone and trying to get around their guard. I point this out to say that if you're making a fighting game, there's really no reason this problem should exist because you can find dozens and dozens of examples of how dev teams have dealt with this issue. Now the fix for this is simple, at least ideally it's simple on the coding side of things that may be a whole different discussion. but. The majority of fighting games that ran into this issue somewhere down the line through development just decided that, hey, if you commit to one attack, you can't do any damage with that second attack until your first attack is done. And that's also what Jump Force decided to go with. So if I'm pointing out how Jump Force fixed it, why are we talking about this then, Awaken? What's the point? Um, because they fixed it, but they didn't fix it. There are so many things that exist in this game that show me that this was just a cash cow that they were milking for the anniversary of Shonen Jump and this is one of those things. This problem exists all throughout the game. It is not just one or two characters that could use this guard break exploit. In fact, I'd say about half the roster had some sort of way to break through guards in an exploitive game breaking way. This shows me that this isn't some simple exploit that just fell through the cracks. This means that throughout their entire time period developing the game, going through alpha and beta and getting game testers along with game testing the game themselves, they never ever ever thought this was a possibility and never even tried it. Now I don't want to come across too harsh, but truthfully a mechanic as important as breaking through someone's guard should have been fully tested and thought of any and every exploit possible. But this is one of the most simple exploits that has existed in the fighting game industry almost since the beginning of time. There's no reason that this should have existed. But guess what? Spike Chunsoft gets away with it because they immediately came in with the flagship of we're not aiming to make some super competitive fighting game, just a fun couch play thing you can do with your friends and family. Spike Chunsoft tried to patch this time after time after time after time and the community just kept finding more and more and more and more characters who were able to do this exploit and I think that really just put it to bed for me and made me accept that this is going to exist within the game is that you were able to do the exploit with some of the newer DLC characters. These characters are new to the game. You design them from the ground up. Hopefully, at least, you didn't just 
pretend that they were new when you actually had them already developed that'd be kind of scummy huh but assuming you're not complete scumbags uh bandai because that definitely be more of a publisher thing not a developer thing um these were new characters you made from the ground up you know that the guard exploit is a huge problem within the game why would you not test and make sure that none of your new characters have this major issue? It doesn't make any sense. Unless you, the developer, realize that competitive players will never buy into a character or create a team that doesn't at least have one character on the roster that can use this exploit. Because truthfully, if you don't at least have it in your back pocket, I'm not necessarily saying you need to be a scumbag and revolve your entire game plan around it, then you're playing at a disadvantage because the only real workaround to this exploit is can't beat them, then I guess you gotta join them. So this exploit existing pretty much tipped the scales in a negative favor in terms of joint force. You can have a great fighting game that gives lots of tools to offense, attack, aggressive, heavy type players. You can have a great fighting game that gives lots of tools to defensive players and, you know, players who want to turtle behind guard. But a real solid, just top of the line fighting game. It's going to make sure to give a fair amount of tools to defensive players and a fair amount of tools to offensive players to make the game balanced. Spike Chunsoft did not do that. They fundamentally failed when it came to that. But this is an exploit, right? So maybe it's just like an accident that the tipping scales got this out of order. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they didn't intend for this to be a super heavy offensive game. No, I'm being super sarcastic. If you can't tell I'm being sarcastic, maybe you should subscribe because, you know, you know from watching my other videos, I'm being extremely sarcastic. There are no defensive tools in this game. And the one that does work is so broken and dumb. It makes absolutely no sense. So let's move on to unfair frames so for the sake of simplicity i'm not going to explain what frame data is if you really care that much then just go look up another video on youtube but the average jump force player doesn't care what frame data is they'll never need to use it because they aren't playing non 3d arena anime fighters but in short it's just how quickly you can do a move just to keep it short and sweet that's all it is how quick you can do a move typically to balance out frames developers go hey this attack does a lot of damage but it's really slow and then they go hmm well let's make this attack do not that much damage but it goes really fast yeah they screwed this up too there are so many attacks in jump force that either existed and at one point got patched or it still exists because you know abandoned game and all really really powerful and really really strong and set up some just brilliant almost touch of death like combos and they're just insanely fast to the point of even if they were weak attacks they'd still be unfair and unbalanced by how fast they were this is a perfect time to point out how bad Jump Force felt online, at least compared to its offline counterpart. Most people either don't know or just choose not to talk about it because they didn't touch the bare bone offline mode. And quite honestly, I don't blame you. But Jump Force online can be kind of unresponsive and bad. So a slow, sluggish, unresponsive game in combination with moves that come out pretty much instantly within like two or three frames and people who know what frame data is uh i'm not exaggerating some of these attacks really came out that fast to the point where if you saw a highly skilled player someone who was good at the game papa berto is like a great example because i'd say he's pretty good at the game um when you're defending for these attacks, there's no reacting to them. You literally have to have in your mind that they're going to do it and already be blocking before they even show signs of doing the attack. That's not how fighting games work. That's bad. So I realize now at this point, I'm like 15 minutes in. And if I keep going at this pace and this amount of detail for each of these topics, I'll be sitting here talking about Jump Force for like an hour. And uh, that's something that I definitely 
definitely do not want to do. So let's move along and pick things up by talking about the one and only escape spam. So like a lot of things in Jump Force, uh, this isn't a new thing in terms of fighting games that Jump Force implemented into their game. Uh, in fact, an escape mechanic, substitution, combo breakers, they exist pretty much in most modern fighting games in some form or fashion. Jump Force just royally screwed it up. And there's no surprise there. So there was a lot of pushback when these type of mechanics first started getting into fighting games. A lot of fighting games fans didn't really want a, like a get out of jail free card because that's a little silly. Like if you get caught by my combo, I should be able to execute my combo. But over time, I feel like either we've relaxed on the pushback because we've accepted the fact that it's a thing that more and more fighting games are going to do or a lot more people have just come to the terms and realized that hey fighting games kind of a niche genre and we want to grow this thing and we want to make more people be able to get into it you know what i'm saying enjoy it so it's nice to have these type of forgiving mechanics because when you very first start a fighting game not everybody's a robot not everybody's a pro you're gonna have delayed inputs you're gonna have brain farts you're gonna have missed inputs things happen Happen, right so the idea behind this escape mechanic in jump force is that you can hit l1 or lb and uh escape out of a combo right that's that's all fine and dandy like i said those things exist within other fighting games the more traditional fighting game i can think of that has it recently in terms of like mainstream appeal Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat has combo breakers, so people are fine with them there, they should be fine with them here, right, because it's, it's a fine mechanic, no, no, again, not sarcasm, you should, uh, you should know that, no, it doesn't work in Jump Force, it's bad, here's why. Usually with those type of mechanics, there's some type of give and take, you're giving up something to be able to get out of a combo, because at the end of the day, it takes a lot of mental willpower to trap someone in a combo. You have to be ahead of your opponent. So if the game is giving you an option to easily get out of that situation that you put yourself in, then there needs to be some type of tax. Now, the tax in Jump Force is supposed to be your action gauge. Now, I haven't explained the action gauge because to be honest, the way I kind of wrote this script is under the impression that you have some base level knowledge of Jump Force, but I'll get into the action gauge just really quick. Essentially, that little circle there at the bottom corner of the screen allows you to do things like escape, chase, and dash. Now, you need your action gauge to do any of these, well, actions, and escaping completely depletes the action gauge. Now, that would be fine and a great trade-off to stop the spamming of escapes but the problem is you don't need to completely refill the action gauge to do another escape in fact you don't even need to do half of the action gauge to completely escape in fact you don't even need to do a quarter of the action gauge to completely escape again you literally just need anything anything within that bar you need like two centimeters of action gauge and you can escape again for some silly reason now at this point in the video i'm sure there's some super jump force fanatic and some really sweaty try hard who's like s1 and he's yelling at me about how there are counters to all these broken mechanics so that makes them not broken and uh you're dumb that's not true spike chuntoff may have had ideas to balance and offset some of these mechanics but the same way these mechanics aren't implemented correctly their counters aren't implemented correctly either so the counter to someone immediately spamming escape which again is a huge issue because it more caters to this super aggressive playstyle where a lot of people aren't even blocking they're just trying to get their attack off first and if they unfortunately don't land the first hit they're just spamming lb or l1 and trying to escape and then instantly blocking there is the chase mechanic like i mentioned earlier and if you don't know what the chase mechanic is essentially if someone escapes and you immediately hit lb or l1 as they escape you can chase them and close in the gap of space the escape creates and still punish them within the combo but the reason that's dumb as i just touched on earlier is jump force feels 
terrible online and so realistically you have to anticipate someone doing this you can't actually react to the escape itself you kind of just have to learn the timing of the terrible input delay maybe some of the lag if you don't have the greatest connection and the person actually escaping and it's it's bad and it just leads to most people not using the mechanic i talked to a lot of jump force players who were like not the highest players but we're talking b2 b1 rankings which is like we can reasonably say that's above average and they didn't even know the chase mechanic existed within the game they just accepted the fact that people can spam escapes and honestly it leads to the original and what i again think is the biggest problem in jump force the guard break exploit how does it lead back to that because if you break someone's guard it depletes the action gauge and it locks it in a depleted state for a certain amount of time so in reality if most players were annoyed with someone spamming the escape button over and over again instead of using the chase mechanic like the devs intended typically they just you know use the exploit to break your guard and then you couldn't really regain your action gauge for a certain amount of time and by the time that you actually were able to regain your action gauge from your guard being broken um you'd be half dead and that leads me to the next point of a truly unbalanced combo to damage ratio so combos, they're arguably the thing that make fighting games what they truly are, doing a combination of attacks. They look pretty, they're satisfying to do if you've done them right, which Jump Force hasn't. Uh, so let's talk about it. <laughs> so it doesn't take a true fighting game master to really, you know what I'm saying, figure out and get the most out of the combination system in Jump Force nor do I think they wanted it to be that way. And that's fine, I'm not trying to belittle that vision or belittle anyone who does get satisfaction out of doing combos in Jump Force because I think there needs to be a fighting game spectrum. I think one of the biggest problems with getting into fighting games is that people wanna do cool stuff, but it's too hard to do the cool stuff and no one's willing to put in the time it takes to actually learn how to do the high-end combos at the bottom of your move list. That being said though, games that have auto combo mechanics and games that have combos that are really easy to pull off and that aren't super precise, understand that you can't let your easy combos do insane amounts of damage. It doesn't make any sense. If you run across the right type of players, two competent jump force players that are going back and forth are really just looking to hit each other with a total combo of like six and that's between each other so three for the individuals meaning they can hit you with a combo like three or four times and win and I'm not talking about one round I'm talking about the entire match jump force lets you do unreasonable amount of damage within certain combos and truthfully i don't think they ever thought their combo system could get as deep as some players took it and i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing it's a good thing in the sense that it's really impressive at what type of combos jump force players could put together even though some of them are truly based in gimmicks and exploiting other broken things but whatever it's fine you're using the tools the game gave you i guess so carry on but it's bad because it led to spike tunes off having to do these little tweaks that didn't change the game a lot one off but in total when you look at all the little tweaks they did to like damage and things of that nature it really really impacted the overall product in the end compared to when jump force first came out now I do think to a certain extent they anticipated people being able to string together really powerful combos because the balance to this was supposed to be filling up your ability meter um, and that's not an uncommon thing in fighting games right? That should work right because you know 
Well, lots of people do this, you know what I'm saying? You're getting, you're getting beat, you get abilities. You know, it's a nice balance out thing, right? <laughs> Jump Force can uh, do something that traditional fighting games do. <laughs> Am I right? You know, they can totally pull it off, you know? <laughs> Sarcasm. Okay, so on a serious note, if you're getting locked in combos, Jump Force goes out of his way to give you not only a little bit of your ability gauge, they also give you some awakening gauge, and they also have a nice damage limiter that doesn't work all that good in my personal opinion. So if you don't know what a damage limiter is, and other people call it other things, but essentially it's a thing that for every extra hit you do, you do less damage on that attack. So let's say you do two hooks, right? No anime character throws two traditional hooks, but that's the best thing I can think of. So you throw two punches and they have the exact same punch. One punch may do 10% damage. That next same punch does 5% damage. This is implemented in Jump Force and other fighting games to sort of balance out super long combos, but it doesn't work that good in Jump Force in my personal opinion. The idea behind these is it's supposed to make your player base get in the lab and find a good suitable balance to where you're doing a reasonable amount of attacks for a reasonable amount of damage. And I can't tell if it's just because the average Jump Force player doesn't care or because it doesn't work that well, but that is not the effect that it has. All Jump Force players, minus like maybe 1% of them, completely ignore this or maybe don't even know about it and go full pedal to the metal and hit you as however many times they want and make the combo as long as possible. And I'm sure at this point I just sound like a bad player complaining and if that's the impression you got that's fine I don't really care although I will admit if you think I played this game for 160 hours and didn't get good at it um, you're dense. That being said though, I'm more so bringing up all these things because they're valid reasons to drop Jump Force. I know Spike Chunsoft didn't really go the competitive approach, but I don't know how long a fighting game can last in the modern era without being competitive. I don't even know if any fighting game throughout the history of time could really last without being competitive. Fighting games have two things to rely on for longevity, introducing new DLC characters and the player base enjoying the game itself. It can't be like other games and introduce a new gun or introduce a new map or introduce a new game mode and instantly spike interest back in the game. At the end of the day, once you come up with the basic premise for how you want the mechanics within your fighting game to work, at this point in time, we're kind of limited on what you can actually do to extend the life of your product. So no, it's not okay that all these problems and issues existed within Jump Force. And I know that the Jump Force player base really truly believes it is because they found all these workarounds like backstepping guard breaks and all these other small things that you can do to try to avoid some of these exploits and issues that I haven't even gone into detail about because truthfully, it's not on the player base to figure out how to balance a game. It's on the developers and none of these solutions came about because of updates it's just playing the game and understanding how to avoid certain cheese and that shouldn't be a thing you have to do when i boot up fighters i don't need to worry about how to avoid exploits i just need to focus on playing the game and trying to be better than the person i'm facing and i'm making this video because i had fun with jump force and if these issues didn't exist i think jump force would be a lot more well received Fortunately, that is not the case though. So look, if you love this game, that's great. It's always nice for people to find something that they like. Even if it has flaws, it doesn't matter. You should be able to enjoy it. Don't go dying on a hill defending this game. People have a right to be upset with it and not enjoy it, but you also have a right to enjoy it and talk about how much you enjoy it. It's unfortunate that the game's getting delisted. There's never any reason to delist a game, in my opinion. There are a couple of fans 
that have come up with the theory that the reason Bandai is delisting the game is because they're making a Jump Force 2 or some type of sequel to Jump Force. I, I'm not trying to be a pessimist here, but I don't think that's a realistic mindset, like, at all. The only real games I can think of that delist their previous titles are sports games, and there's really no reason for them to even do it. It's pretty scummy the fact that sports games even delist their games and turn off servers. A lot of people have called that out as a sort of passive aggressive way to make you continue buying games in the franchise. So if that's the route Bandai is going, then honestly, that doesn't even put a good taste in my mouth if we are getting a Jump Force sequel. This is a much, much bigger issue and it's more so me flaming Bandai Namco as a publisher and not so much Spike Chunsoft because realistically Spike Chunsoft should have never even been given this project to begin with. If you go look at their other entries in the game industry, they're all pretty much just these kind of narrative games, more like a telltale type of thing, and they're not even that super heavily focused on gameplay, much less fighting games, so it was just weird for Bandai to give them something of this magnitude, something that's supposed to be this AAA big budget fighting game, it's supposed to be one of the biggest crossovers in anime history and have all of these jump IPs that mean so much to so many people across the world. I digress though, this is what went wrong with Jump Force. Before we end the video though, let me list off a few things that I really really despised about Jump Force that I decided to cut out this video and not go into super detail about because this video is already like 30 minutes long. Number 1, CACs are dumb and kinda overpowered and are only in the game to sell more copies to bank on people wanting to make their own custom avatars. I get it, that's kinda cool, but considering the fact that you can give them any combinations of abilities in the entire game for the most part minus some things like not using stand abilities because obviously our created characters don't have stands, that's busted. But even more busted is because there's really no way to see what type of abilities your opponent's CAC even has. So you have to wait until they individually use every ability to know what to look for. Yeah, that's kind of broken. Two, sticking with the CACs, the customization for them is kind of bad. I don't want them in the game, but if they were going to be in the game, it'd be nice if they had decent customization. Somehow, a game like Dragon Ball Xenoverse, despite literally being limited within the intellectual property of Dragon Ball has a much deeper and more fleshed out customization than this game despite the fact that this game has access to plentiful more intellectual properties. Usually the customization for this game goes just cosplay as your favorite anime character so that was a little bit of wasted potential. 3. There's only one selectable character model for each character in the game. Look. I wasn't asking for like completely different character models and skins that you have to get real fancy with and invest a bunch of money and time into, but you could have at least done like an extra colorway because this causes a very very annoying issue where if your opponent picks the same character as you, it can get hard to tell who is who. Also doesn't help that Jump Force is one of these games that does not let you see what characters your opponent is picking. You have to pick your characters then find your opponent. So you can't even try to avoid it by like being like, okay, well you wanna pick Jotaro, then I won't pick Jotaro. No, it's just completely random dumb luck. Four, and this isn't just a Jump Force problem, it's kinda just an anime game problem I'm seeing more and more. Get rid of these dumb hub worlds with all these desks that I have to run around. Stop. Stop doing this. This is silly. Just use menus, fam. Just use menus. One of the greatest things about fighting games is that I can just hop in and hop out. But when you make me learn a hub world and run around and waste all this, it's just it's frustrating, fam. Stop. Stop using hub worlds. Why? Why are you wasting this extra money on creating these assets and all? Just a menu, fam. Just look, invite friend, player match, ranked match. That's all you have to do. Just do that. Just, just fam. Just menus, menus, please. Menus, people, menus. 
5. I know this game's all about spectacle, but some of the ultimates have way too much going on to the point where they just completely trashed the frame rate. The first one that can come to mind off the top of my head is Naruto's ultimate. It literally just like cuts the frame rate in half when you do it. Why? It's bad. And last, but certainly not least, with the cutting off of these servers, Bandai has said that the only thing that will pretty much be usable online is the player match system. This system is kind of bad and can potentially kill this game even more depending on what the community ends up doing. The basic difference between player match and ranked match is you can include the option to use character levels. Now most people don't even know about character levels because it's irrelevant to them because most people are just playing the ranked mode but yes you can level up your characters in jump force so with them taking away the ranked mode and only leaving this player match mode if the community decides that they only want to play player match modes with the character level option enabled um that kind of breaks the game and kills it because no new person can get into playing online without grinding their character levels. That's stupid. And I know I said that the last one, but uh, I didn't write this down in the script. I kind of just thought about it as I was talking about the player match thing. The ranked match system in Jump Force was terrible, useless, hollow, a shell. Those levels didn't matter. And if I had to pick between that little like D to S system or just having a simple win loss record what do we with that no win loss leaderboards not even a win percentage really come on now fam that is completely silly all right now we're done that's another video if you enjoyed you can leave a like and subscribe and do all that other uh fun stuff you can even dislike the video even though now people can't see dislikes that's kind of weird right uh <laughs> I make videos of this quality or better all the time. I am leaving.